a very important topic, control structures in Python. Now, so far we have executed the code line by line or sequential code execution. But with the control, control structures, we have an option. Based on the condition, we can execute one set of statements or code. And if the condition is not true, we can execute another set of statements. So there is the power of this. The control, control structures, they control the flow. And the first one that we're going to start is the if statement. Look at how it's written. If is the keyword that we need to use. Then there is expression or condition. Okay. Then we have a column and we have the code that needs to run. So based on this expression, if it's true, it will go inside here. If it not, then it will not be this part. It will not be even executed because the condition is checked. So if it's true, bam, goes here. If it's not, goes outside of the body of this. So this is called body. In the body, we can have a single line of code or multiple lines of code. And usually we have multiple lines of code. Now, look at here. We have indentation. And Python interpreter, we're going to talk more about the indentation. Python interpreter needs this indentation, indentation to figure out, OK, this belong to the if condition or if statement. And I need to execute if based on the condition uh, evaluation. OK, and here we're going to use the Boolean true or false value, true or false values. Remember, we said before. So let's do it. I'm going to create a variable called is developer and I will set to true. All right. And this will always be true. So I'm going to say if is developer, then colon here and look, it's all almost giving me indentation by itself. So if is developer is true, then I'm going to say print. Wow. You, this must be exciting. Okay. An exclamation mark here. Now, if we run the code, we will get this print statement. Why? Because the condition here we set is always going to be evaluated to true. Now, if I change this to false, it will never go inside. Look, nothing will happen. So I'm going to put another print here. Normal print, right? Or I'm going to say outside the if statement body. Okay, so this is happening outside. We, we don't have any indentation. Don't worry about the this one below. Okay, so because it's false, it's going to print this one because I have nothing else to print. This is all comments. And remember, we can write multi-line comments using this triple single quote notation. Mm -hmm. OK, so if it's true, then it will go here. If condition is true, then run the commands we have or the code we have in the body. And after it's finished, it will go outside and print this. So we will have two outputs now. The first one, because the condition is true, it will go inside and then outside because it's done. There's nothing else to do. OK, so this is the if condition. Now, another part is what we're going to do if is developer is true, right? But what we say if the if developer is false, right? So it will not go here. Well, for that scenario, we have if else statement. And the if else statements are if condition, then run this. Else, if the condition is evaluated to false, do this. There you go. Now I'm just gonna go back one step, right? I'm gonna change this to true. I'm gonna copy this part. And we are going here under this comment, okay? There you go. Now, if developer is false, if is developer, this is not going to be executed now, but the else statement. Now in the else statement, we don't need to write a condition. We just need to write here. What is your profession then? And question mark. Okay. So this is happening like this in real scenario. 
because is developer will be false it goes here and it check the condition the condition will be false because we already said it so this will not be executed it will jump from here go to else there is no condition in else right and it will print this one okay so let's go here first these first two are from here right don't get confused but the last one is from our if else statement now this is very good it gives us two options if this is the if the condition is true run this part and if condition is false go to the else statement and run this part as again we can have multiple here and here we can say print outside the if else statement okay so if i run it again i will see two for the first part and two for this one and you know what i can do here print i can do like this and say if else part so you will have a distinction okay let's run it now you know which one is for if good if statement good now you have a more clear these first two words for if statement and this for f if else now but this give us very it gives us only two options if the condition is not true go here or if the condition is true execute this part but sometimes we need more and I'm going to do it one more time and say elif. Now, this is very good because look at the syntax. If expression run the statements, but if the expression is not true, then go to this elif block and check the condition again. And if that condition is true, go here. If that condition is false, go back to this elif. Another condition. And if that is true, go here. If that is not true, go back here. And at the end, we have else. So if everything this fails, if all of this condition fails, the else will be as executed. But if any of these conditions here is true, the statements inside will run and this else will never go. Okay? So that's the beauty. Now we have so, so many options because elif is very powerful. And let's do one example. So I'm going to check here. I'm going to create here under the comments is developer again equals false and is employed equal true because I'm going to use this one for the elif part. Okay. And remember, they do have also condition to be checked. And that's beauty because the else. No, we don't have it. We Before we have in the if else, we have only one condition. So that's why we have only two options. So I'm going to say if is developer, then colon indentation print. Wow. This is great. Exclamation mark. And elif is employed. Very good print great at least you have a job All right because we say employed mm, it's true and say okay great at least you have a job now the else will go print here we'll say what is your profession then so let's run it question mark let's run it and see what happens great at least you have a job well that's true because we set this like that so if the condition is true which we evaluate to false it will skip here it will not run this block of uh, of code it will go to elif's part and elif part is going to check is employed and is employed is always going to be evaluated to true and that's why it's run this part so when it's done, if, because there's only one single line of code here, it will just jump out of this 
if elif else block. So there you go. Now you know how you can make decisions based on a condition. And you always need to remember that you need to have a proper indentation, otherwise it will not run. So code here can have as a multiple lines of code and this here it's called a block. This is the how we start. This is the condition or, or expression. And these are the statements. It can have multiple. You can say, great, at least you have a job. Today is hard to have a job, right? So if I run it, that will be it. I will have these two here because I have this because it's true. Then I'm going to run these two lines of code. And we can say print outside of the elif block group. And if we run it again, we will have these two plus the last one. Great. Now you know how these conditions are working. And this is very simple condition. We can make it even better. For example, let's say x equal 10. This is a variable x. So if x, oops, if x is greater than 11, then we say, mm, if that is the true, print the value of x is smaller than the value of x must be greater, not smaller, than 11, right? Else, or elif, elif x is bigger than 5, let's give a breathing space here, print the value of x is bigger than five very good and the last condition will be else print the value of x is undefined or yeah undefined okay so what you think which condition will be true pause the video i'm gonna run it you can pause the video think about it and yeah the value of five, the value of X is bigger than five. And that is true because this condition, 10 is not bigger than 11. It will never go here. So it will go here. 10 is actually bigger than five. The value of X is bigger than five. It will never go here. So the condition part, we can set to be much more complex and we will do this in future, right? But in the next lecture, we're gonna learn a little bit more about the indentation, but so far control structures, we have covered if statement, if else statement, and if elif, right? There you go. Now everything is connecting. We So far we have learned about very basic Python syntax. Now we're just improving more advanced Python features. Okay. So that's it. That's it for this lecture. So. Python indentation, as I explained, is very important. And it refers to the spaces at the beginning of the code, right? So Python uses this because it's not like other programming languages. They have brackets, so they indicate the body starting here, because this is the body, right, of the if statement. So if you're a JavaScript developer, then you know that the spacing, they're not a big deal, but you do them because the code looks cleaner. You know this, that this part belongs to this. You know that this part belongs to this, right? So in Python, in annotation will indicate the code, uh, that the code is different from, from the one above. So it separates, this isn't one block, this as a different block. So number of empty spaces is not actually that important as long as there is a one only here, right? It was at least one identity. Now, by default, I think so, here you should get two. Now I have four and I will tell you why. But let's see if we don't have. Now I'm gonna use the same example, x equal 10. 
And if I don't have this indentation in the else clause, because everything here will fail, all of these conditions will be evaluated to false, and the else condition should be, the else statement should be executed, right? But if I do this, even this gives me this red wiggly line, and here it is, indentation error, expected at the indented block. That's true. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of the people, they use spaces. You can use tabs here, whatever you want. I think one tab is equal to four spaces, right? Four empty spaces. But um, there is an option here in the settings. So if in future the settings are not here, look for them. And let me just zoom in a little bit, right? I mean, expand it, this one. So the font size, normal, indent type, indent type should be spaces or tab. Mine is spaces, you can just choose a tab. And if it tab, you can say one or two. But go with spaces and choose four. This is the most natural looking way, right? And I'm not sure that you need to save it. I think that's it. So every time you do indentation like this and hit enter, it will all, almost give you this, right? So now if I run the program, there you go. So you can choose the then type to be spaces or tab, whatever you want. Spaces or tab, I choose spaces here and I choose the size to be four. Now you can see the indentation in Python is very important. So please make sure you use indentation in your code. Okay, now today we're gonna to talk about operators, comparison operators and logical. So before we talked about arithmetic operator and augmented, so today we're gonna to talk about logical operators and this, and it's very important for you to understand this. So equal operator greater than, less, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, not equal to. So what we can do here, if X is equal equal to four, what you think? This value three is equal to four? Sorry, to Y? No, it's not. And we should get false here. Good. Now let's do another test. If X is greater than Y, so is, because X is a variable that holds three and Y is the variable that holds four, we can easily say three is not, uh, is three greater than one, uh, than four? No. That sh then we should get another false. Good. Now this one, is three less than four? Absolutely yes, we should get true. Now greater than or equal to, mm, this is interesting. This one, three is not greater or equal to, to, to four and that's why we're gonna get false. But if for some reason we have y should be three, right? So we have x and y to have the same value, three. Then three is not greater than three, but it is equal to three. So this should turn to true. Good. Let's return back to normal. I hope you understand this part. It's very easy. Now this one will be again evaluated to true because yeah, four is, three is less than or equal to four and not equal, hmm, yes. Three is not equal to four and you should get another true. Now we have logical operators, and, or, or not. So here is one example. I'm gonna show you that it's very simple to understand this. And operator, let's do this. First, let's do a equal four and let's do print. A is bigger than three and a is smaller than 10. Okay, here we use the and operator. That's why it's in different color. So four is bigger than three, which is true. And four is smaller than 10, which is again true. So the way the and works is the both operands of the, of the left and the right side, they need to be evaluated to true, both of them. So in order this to be evaluated to true, let's see, there we go. Now, if only one of them was evaluated to false, which is this one, four is not greater than 10, 
the entire expression will be evaluated to false. How cool is this? I'm going to include that example here. And let's write here number one and now do here number two or. Now with or is very simple. Just going to use the same one. Or I'm just going to use the last one because we have true or false, right? So this is true and this is false. And we're going to use the or operand in the middle, in the middle. So the or operand Operant, operant requires, operator, sorry, requires one of the operands, either this or this, to be evaluated to true. So if this is evaluated to true, then the entire expression is evaluated to true, right? Doesn't, it, it's not going to check the other one. There you go. Now, it will be false if, all, if both of them are false, right? Like this. There you go. Now, the third one is the not. Hmm not so i'm gonna sh i'm gonna share this example again with you so this was or so four is bigger than three and four is smaller than uh it's not bigger than 10 but again because of the or we are getting true right this was a valid to true so we can wrap this entire one i'm just gonna cut it one another pair of brackets put everything inside and in front, I can put not. So what not will do, this is a valid to true and not will reverse it. It will say, okay, if this is true, then I'm gonna turn it to false. There you go. And if this is false, I'm gonna turn it to true. Okay, that's how it works. So let's do one mini example. For example, let's say that a person have a driver license and it's 16 years old, so it's allowed to drive. So let's create that one. So my age, it's equal to 16, good. And his license is equal to true. Now we can create an if condition here, say if his license and my age are greater or equal to 16, then print hop for a ride. Else, print, remember the indentation. Sorry, buddy. I will drive tonight. Okay, now what will happen here? We have two conditions, this on the left and this on the right, expressions. So this is evaluated to true, right? Because it will always be true. And this will be evaluated to true because age 16 is greater or equal to 16 means that 16 is equal to 16, right? So this line should be executed, right? Now, if we change this to 15, for example, this is true and this is evaluated to false. So true and false, it makes false, right? So sorry buddy i will drive tonight there you go now you understand how powerful these operators are I'm just going to comment this one so you can know what will happen and that's pretty much it for this lecture okay now it's time to talk about true tvs falsy values what are they so far we have done boolean and we know that the boolean data type it can be either true or false and we use those booleans to e evaluate the condition in if state so let's do this example so if seven is greater than four which is true then print true else print false and we know that this condition because of the boolean will be evaluated to true and this statement will be executed okay let's run it Let's confirm it. It's going to be true. Good. But if I change this, the second part will be the else statement will be executed. Okay. Because of the Boolean true. Now, the truthy values are the values that are evaluated to true are considered to be truthy. Values that are evaluated to false are considered to be falsy. Hmm. This doesn't answer too much, right? Doesn't give you any clues. But 
let's do one example. So let's say x equal 10. And if x, then print again true, else print false. Okay, now before I run it, what you think will happen? I got true. But how come this variable here with this value is evaluated here to true? There is no condition here or an expression. So what is happening? What is happening in the background? How does the interpreter knows? Okay, yes, this value I will say it's true and this block will be executed. Well, this is happening because of the truth and falsity values and because of the Boolean context. The Boolean context require any value or any statement, whatever here we have in the if condition to be evaluated to something, either true or false. And there are rules behind it. Now, I know that you're confused, but here are the rules. All of the values are considered to be truthy except the following. So I'm going to paste here a lot of rules. So constant false will always be false. Constant none will be evaluated to false. Zero will be evaluated to false. Float, complex, zero J, empty list, empty tuples, empty dictionaries. Make a space here. Empty sets, empty strings, empty range. Hmm. So that is why the X was evaluated to true because it didn't belong to any of this. So all of the values are truthy values except the following. And here we can use the bool built-in function to check if this is true. For example, let's say if bool takes one parameter like this. So if we pass this to bool function, this false, we should return back false. And the bool function, we need to print it out in order to see the result. So if I run it, I will see all of this going false, 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 false. All right. Now it's very easy because we know that some of the values will, regardless, this range of zero, this empty string will be considered as a false. And this is very good in Python. For example, don't worry about this complex OJ, uh, zero J here. I was, we're not going to talk about complex numbers, but I have a link here. You can read in your free time. So let's do one example. Imagine that you have a subscription website where you want your users to be registered in order to use your services. So a user usually puts their username, password, and email. So let's create this subscription website here. Okay, so I'm going to say user registration. And here I will say username. And I say Jane. Password. Or I would just say pass here. Okay, let's do password here. And I will say, I'm going to leave it as an empty string. Mm, look here, I'm connecting the dots. So email, let's say jane at gmail.com. Great. Now let's create a condition. If username and password and email, then I can say print the user can be registered. And here I need to delete that one, right? Else print some of the fields are empty please fill them in, fill them, okay? So we need to register the user, but the user needs to have all of this because of the end end, right? We cannot register a user without the password. But usually when we creating a programs like this, in the background, we check if the password is empty and this and that, if the email is empty, so we're not gonna allow the user, we're gonna give the warning and we say, user, yeah, please, just add the password. You can't register, right? So we're gonna notify the user before it actually data is stored in a database because we cannot store a user without password. 
But here, because of the truthy and falsy values, we can skip that part. We don't need to check password. We don't need to check if the username is empty because now if I run this program, some of the fields are empty. Please fill them. How does it know? Well, because this is evaluated to falsy value, right? Because the empty strings are always evaluated somewhere here, are always going to be evaluated to false. And this is very powerful. Now we can, we don't need to think about everything. We don't need to do run checks. Say if password is equal to empty string, do this, right? Otherwise we have to do this. If password, oops, is equal to empty string, then print pass field is empty, right? If I run it, you will see that that, will, that print will be there. Here it is. So I don't need to do this. I don't need to do go one extra step. And there you go. Now you know that everything in Python, every value in the background is converted to either falsy or truthy. And we need this because of scenarios like this. Every value is true except the following ones. Okay? So make sure you understand. Now, the complex numbers. This here, O0J, right? So this is how we can create a complex number, right? And here it is. The complex number have a J at the end. And that is clear giveaway that J glued to the second number changes the entire expression. And this is a complex, right? So even if you, if you check the class, we will see if it's complex. If we remove the J, it will be three plus two. They are both integer. They will belong to a class. They will belong to a data type integer, right? Now the complex number literals in Python mimic this and that. So we're not going to use it, right? You can read this. I will include the link. So realpython.com slash forward slash Python dash complex dash numbers. And you will read all of this. So the complex number, they are not implemented everywhere, not in every programming language, right? So there you go. Now it's the time to explain the ternary operator. So, so far for the conditional statements, we have used if, else, or elif, right? And based on the condition, if that condition was evaluated to true or false, we have uh, run or execute a certain block of statements or statement. So, but there is another way. There is a shorthand syntax how we can achieve all of this. So, this is known as ternary operator or in some way it's called conditional expression. Now, this is the syntax. I know it looks strange. So condition if true, if expression, else condition if false. Okay. But believe me, the syntax is confusing even for me. But when you see a real example, then you will understand. Okay. Now let's create a variable called is old that will be evaluated to Boolean true, right? So this will always be true. Now, Let's create this condition. So this ternary operator, I'm going to write. And by the way, this program will be if you are allowed to drive, right? So if you are allowed to drink, sorry. So you can drink tonight if you're old enough. Else you're not, you cannot drink tonight because of your age. Okay. So is old is already true. So I'm going to say, yes, you can drink tonight and if is old else you cannot drink tonight because or just say cause of your age good now let's save all of this whatever this ternary operator returns, let's store it in a variable called is allowed, right? And let's print is allowed. That's it. Now, if we run this, what you think will happen? Yes, you can drink tonight because is old is the expression that we have here. After the if condition, after the if statement, we have the expression, right? And the expression is old is always going to be evaluated to true. And therefore, when the, this is, the expression is evaluated to true, 
it goes to the left side and everything there is there this can be something else doesn't have to be a string like this it's going to be stored in this variable or if we change this now if is old is evaluated to false which will be then the else part will be executed and what is there is going to be stored into is allowed let's run it there you go now this looks a little bit cleaner than if else statement but looks also a little bit more complex right so let's do here false change it to true and just comment out this part run it again now you know how the ternary operator or in some literal called conditional expression is working so now remember the expressions are operations that will evaluate to something based on a given condition so expressions are representation of value and the expressions were introduced in python in the version 2.5 good now you know a lot of things so when the condition is true this part will be executed right when the condition is false this part so false right side true left side there you go now that's it in the next lecture we're going to start uh, we're going to learn about short circuiting okay let's discuss about short circuiting the short circuiting is essential because it will save time and increase our program performance so the interpreter will evaluate the expression that involves the or operator right this operator and it will start in it will stop immediately when one of the operands right or one of the one of the conditions return is evaluated to true right so for example here i've used the same example my age 16 is lies to true been drinking false and i deliberately put been drinking first because how the interpreter will go the first step will say okay we set this one to 16 set this one to true set this one to false and go here now if been drinking the bin drinking is evaluated to false and the interpreter will say okay let's go next what's next the or operator and say hmm interesting now when it's got one more step is license and it's going to check if this is true or false when it's true it will not go here because when one of the operands doesn't matter which of this is evaluated to one of the expressions is evaluated to true then the or will be always true so only one of this needs to be true doesn't have to be all of three or two of them only one and because this is the only one it will stop there it will not go it will right it will it will execute this line that is called short circuiting so it doesn't waste time it increases the program performance because it will not take bother to do this one so first one yeah because being drinking is false it will say okay go to the next line and see and then when it see the or it will say okay now i can do the short circuiting when the next value is evaluated to true that's how the short circuiting works it increases the program performance so that's pretty much it with with the short circuiting i hope you understand how it works a new operator these are called identity operators so we have is or and is not these two the is operator will return true if both of the variables are the same object and is not this operator will return true if both variables are not the same so these are are the same and this one are not the same so here i create a list with one item and b is again a list with one item same one c is equal to a now let's do the examples here so if i do print a is c what you think will happen let's run it well this return true because a is the same as the object c we haven't learned about object but it's the same as this one because we just copy it right and by the way we i don't recommend doing this type of copy i hope you learn by now now so what we what will happen if we check if print a 
is B. So A and B, what you think? Before I run this one, pause it and think about it. Now, this will return false because A is not the same as B. This will happen. So although they have the same content or value, but they are not the same, right? They're both different objects. Good. Now, let's do one more example. What do you think will happen if I use the comparison operator and compare the object A to the B? Hmm? This is not the time to use the comparison operator because this is another one, but let's just do it. Okay, so if I run it, well, I get true. This is because I compare the content and the content is actually the same one, right? The comparison operator compares the content. And this one compares if they're the same objects. Good, I hope you understand now. I don't wanna confuse you, this is just a a comparison operator it shouldn't be here in this lecture but there you go now what will be with the is not operator so let's go with it so print a is not C what you think will happen let's see it's gonna return false because a is the actual same object right Let's do another one and let's do if A is not B, okay, what you think will happen this time? The output will be true. This will return true because the object A is not the same as the object B, right? They're not the same, that's why. But they do have the same content of values, but they're not the same. Good. And what you think will happen if I use this not comparison operator. Again, I'm using different operators, but I just wanna show you here the difference. So not B. The comparison operator, this one, not, will return false. Let's run it and let's check it. Okay. Because A is equal to B. The content of A is equal to B, right? Now, the there it is in the next lecture we are going to actually compare this is operator with and we're going to compare it to the this operator the comparison one okay let's talk more about is operator vs the equality operator right so we have included the difference between is and quality operator but in this section I will explain more so can you guess the output of this expression print true is equal equal to one and if I run this code the output will be true but why is this well the quality operator will check if both operands are equal to each other we'll check this one and but we are evaluating here two data different data types this is boolean value and this is an integer so they're two different data types and why it's true they're not equal right well they're equal because somewhere in the background the interpreter will try to convert them to the same type because they're not from same type therefore the integer will be converted to boolean in the background using the bool function like this right bool one and we know that bool one is evaluated to true. That's why we have true equal to true. And that's why the both of the operands are equal to each other. The above code is same as this or equivalent to this. That's why we get true is equal to true. Good. Now, you know, now, let's uh do now you know that why true equal equal to one is going to be evaluated to true so let's give another example let's check for this one print empty string is equal equal to one now this is a string a data type a different data type than an integer and the interpreter will try to convert this string 
using the true to or false values to to actual value, right? So the according to the true to or false values, the empty strings will be false, right? Now, if I run this, I will definitely get false. Why is this happening? Well, this is exactly the same one as false equal equal to one. Or the other step will be print will be false, sorry, false equal equal to bool of one. So bool of one, the next step will be true, like the one above, right? So these are all the steps how the Python interpreter got to the result. It tried to convert different data type to be the same data type, and after that to check the equality. Okay, so false, it's not equal to true. There, we should know that when we use the double equality, the best scenario is to compare values that belong to the same data type. But if they're different, let's hope that the Python using its own tactics, own rules, will use the truthy or falsy values and do the best job. Right? Now, on the other hand, the is operator will check if the location in memory where the value is stored is exactly the same between the both objects. So the is operator will perform will not perform type conversion, right? Will not do this. And therefore, that's why the is operator is different than the equality operator. And in the previous lecture, I said comparison. Okay, sorry. Now let's do this. Is operator. And this one was for this operator, and this is for is. So print true is true what you think will happen if i run it the true is true because the true will always have the same value no matter what it will not be boolean true will, will always have the same memory location it will not change whatever we do in the code but let's do this this one print let's do here create a list with one two and another list identical with one two and if I run it now, although they have the same values, they will be evaluated to false. And this is happening. Why? So these two lists have the exact same values. But every time a new list is created, the values are stored somewhere in a memory in a different location. So both lists have a different location. This one has different location. This one has somewhere different location. They do have the same values, but they're not same. So Remember, lists are not just a data type, they're data structures. And when we are dealing with data structures, we need more memory, okay? So that is why they do have the same values, but they're stored in different place. And the is operator will check if they are stored in the same location, and if the values that are stored in the same location are actually the same. So let's do this. Another one. Let's create list one variable where I'm just gonna create one and two, right? Good. Now the next one will be list two, which will be equal to list one. And now you know that I don't like the way this is working, but this is very good for this example. So if I do print list one is list two, what you think will happen? Well. We have copied, we have created a copy here, <clears throat> not pure copy, but by the way. And this is evaluated to true. Well, the list one is created and the values are stored somewhere in a memory, in some location. In the next line, we are just saying that list two is equal to list one. This simply means the list two will not create a new memory location to store the same values because they already they already been stored for the list one. Both these lists will point to the same values. Remember, imagine that here is a memory location like cube, right, or container. And both of these, they point to the same memory location where the values are stored. Now, now if we change, do this. Now, if we do list two dot append, and add three, so add a new item here to the list too. And 
print list one, you will see that list one have the value three as well. Why? Because both of these lists are only reference to the same memory location. Whatever I do with this one, it affects the other one and vice versa. Okay. And that's why we do have here evaluated to true because they are the same. Now, I hope you understand how this, the difference between is operator and equality operator is, right? And how are values stored in a memory? Because this is not very good for copying a list, remember, because we're creating a reference only to the, to the values that are stored from this one. So this one is just pointing there, nothing much. And this one is also pointing, they're both pointing to the same, same place. And that's why when we do is, it's going to give us true, but that's not what we want. Now, this one, although have the same values, it's not true, right? Because they're stored somewhere different in the memory and you are checking if they're actually the same thing, but they're not the same object. They're not the same list. Okay. There, there you go. Now, you know, the difference between is operator and the equality operator. Okay. Let's talk about Python loops. Python loops are very important, but the loops in general are very important in every programming language. So the loops allow us to execute a block of code over and over as long as the condition is true. So this is very powerful. We can, they can, machines can run loops as many times as they need. We can't as humans, we can't do that. It's too hard for us. As long as the machines, they have power enough CPU RAM, they can do it this infinitely or as long as the loop as long as the condition is true now here is the loop syntax for val in sequence and here goes the loop body so it doesn't have to be print i just put it there right it can be statement it's better to be statement or statements okay so it can be statement or multiple statements in that one so the key syntax here is this for keyword here, which is must. And after the four keyword, we have a variable name. This variable name can be anything you want, but should be appropriate for the loop, right? Then we have the in keyword. We already know about this one and sequence of items. Remember, we mentioned that the strings or list are iterable sequences. So this means that the strings are ordered sequence of characters. Same as the list, they're ordered sequence of items. So this means that we can iterate or loop. When I say iterate loop or loop, it's the same thing. That's why here we should have an iterable. An iterable was something that have a sequence of things so we can loop over. Okay, now I'm gonna create here one example. Uh, I'm going to create my string or just my name. And let's put a Jason here. So what I can do for char or character in my name. Remember here, we should put a iterable, right? The sequence, then column. Don't forget that it's very important. Print char. Okay, why I name this variable character, right? Well, simple. One character, because we're going to loop through all of these individual ordered characters in this string. So if I click run, look what will happen. J, each of the individual characters inside this string will be printed out. How cool is this? We accessed everything that we have here, right? So the car, the chair, uh, this variable can be anything. It can be val, stands for value, but it will not change. The main thing is that you need to, con you need to just, when you name this, it need to associate with the one, the, or, the sequence here, right? I had problems explaining this part. Okay, now, so we print each char character inside the sequence. We can loop lists as well. So I have a list here. 
let's loop this one for item in list one let's print that item right because the list contain items that's why i call this variable item and let's see if we have one three five seven nine there you go i have print every, each and every item i look through each and every item in this list now we can do the same thing for sets for item in a set one again item just give a little breathing space and i should have apple banana pineapple and strawberry good yeah i can copy this use it for the tuple and if i run it great i have all of these car names now as an example we have a list of tips so for example you're working in a restaurant your waiter you serve someone and they give you tips and at the end of the day you have this amount right so maybe this is not much but it is what it is so let's write a program using for loop that will calculate how how much i've got in this how many days one two three four five days right so what i can do here i will create a variable called tips sum that will be equal to zero at the beginning right and for tip in tips so i named this variable tip in tips this is the list i will say tips sum will be equal to tips sum plus tip or we can make this shorter with augmented operator like this how cool is this so in each and every loop i want to grab this one and store it in this so the second loop bam this one store it add it to the previous version right because at the beginning when we do this in the first loop this will be 0 plus 22.70 the second loop this will have 22.70 and that will be equal to 22.70 plus this guy here so it will be like uh, 83 point or 84 and it will be stored here right so every time this variable changes let's return it back as it was and now there you go it will loop one two three four five times good so at the end outside of the loop remember this is indented so outside of the loop i can print the tips sum and see how much i will got there you go so i've earned 260 seven dollars that is how you can calculate sum of all of the items from a list i hope you understand how for loop works right it loops until the condition is true or until we have items in the sequence there you go now you know how powerful these loops can be we will continue working with loops in the next section nested loops they're very important because they allow us to nest loop within a loop as long as there is a proper indentation remember the indentation is the key so here i have two lists numbers one two three and letters a and b so let's do one example and you will understand how the nested loops are working now for value or for item let's say in numbers one print item if we leave it like this if you run it it will go one two three only right because we didn't touch the second list but now what i can do is i can use the inner loop so this inner loop will be for letter in letters one okay and print the letter so if i run it let's see what will happen so we'll have one a and b two a and b and three a and b so what's happening here now the in the first iteration this is called each and every time there is a looping 
it's called iteration. So in the first iteration, the outer loop, this is called the outer loop, this is called the inner loop. The outer loop, the value that's gonna be printed, it's gonna be one, right? And once that it's printed, it will go to the next line. Oh, and the interpreter will say, okay, we have another for loop. So let's go there. So in the first iteration of this loop, it will grab the first letter of this uh, array uh, uh, list. Now it will go back here and it will do another iteration and it will print B. That's why we have one A and B. Now it will go back because there's no more iterations. We have finished, we exhaust everything here, every item. It will, it breaks out of this loop. It breaks out of this loop. It goes back here again. And it say for item in numbers, but now item will be number two. It's gonna print two. Then it goes back to this line and say, okay, for letter in letters, and it start the process all over again. And that's why we have two here, A and B, right? Two times, finish this one, goes back here. The item will be three. It will be printed here three. Then it goes again to the inner loop, A and B. And when it's done, goes here again, it's done and gets out of these two loops. So if I have print here, finished, or outside of the for loop, you will see that after this, there's nothing else to do. It will break out of these two loops and it will go here. There you go. Now, because we have done it nested for loops, I would like you to learn about nested if statements because we can do that as well. So the nest if statements, let's do one example. And, and this example is based on a grading system in Australia. For example, a student scores 85, it will be awarded HD. So this doesn't have to be applicable anywhere, just in Australia, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use this one. So I'm gonna copy this one here and I'm gonna paste it here because I want to use it as a, as a, as a reminder. Right, and yeah. hey, the copying and pasting turned out very good. Now let's create here this if nested if, right? So let's say here I'm gonna say great, and I'm gonna give it here 80, or let's give it 80, right? And I'm gonna say if great is bigger than or equal to 49. Right? Then we can do something else without indentation because else will be here. I will say here print F. You will be everything under 49, it's automatic fail. Okay, so if grade is bigger than 49, now we can do things. Now inside I can have another if saying if grade is bigger than or equal to 85, then I can print here HD, right? Now, L if I'm gonna use L if here, if grade is bigger than, so we need to do this condition, bigger or equal to 75. So we want to include the 75, and we want to say grade, grade is less than or equal to 84. So we want to include anything between 75 and 84, but including 75 and 84. I hope you understand me, All right? So print, and here I will say D, and I can copy the same one because, yeah. And look what happened. Remember, the indentation is the king here. 65 to 74. So I'm having 65 here, 74 here, and it's not D, it's a CR or credit. Yeah, and now I need to move this a little bit here to, because we need to be careful of that indentation. Okay, so here I will be 50 to four, uh, 64, including 50 and 64, right? That's why 
greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and here should be p or pass and everything after that it's a fail right and we include that in the else condition so we have 80 here that should go in this category so if i run it i should have automatic d good if i do like 40 48 i should have a fail right based on the grading system if i do 70 75 let's include 75 oh no let's include 85 or 86 and i will have hd or highest distinction good everything is working let's do one more let's do 51 and if it's p then this is working now you know how to do nest if statements as well so we learn about python nested loops so this is outer loop this is inner loop and you have seen an example how you can loop through both of these and how what result you need to expect and also you have seen nested if statements there you go now you learn you have learned very important topics okay now let's talk about while loop the while loop together with the for loop they're the the two most basics or primitive loops in python so while loop is very simple because here's the syntax we have while keyword then we have the condition and then we have a block of statements this is the body of the while loop now the while loop will run if the condition evaluates the true if not it will stop so why we need while loop well we can use while loop when we don't know how many times we need to iterate okay and that's pretty much simple but while loop require us to write a little bit more code if we compare it to the for syntax for loop syntax okay so let's create one example i'm going to create a variable called num and i will give it a value of 10 then i will set the sum to zero and then I will create a variable i with zero. This variable is known as a counter, okay? And why I need the counter, you will see, because without the counter, it will be hard for me to set the condition for this particular example. So while i is smaller or equal than num, even I can put 10 here directly, but it's better with a variable. Then column, and here goes the body, print, oops, print i so i'm just going to print the value of i good now here i need to increment the counter because if i don't increment the counter i will block the entire code this will loop infinitely so don't do this because you're gonna you're gonna break your computer okay so if your computer will freeze eventually it will run out of memory because i will be always zero this will be always 10 and this condition will be always true that this part will run indefinitely if this is not here okay so even we can rewrite this one like this i plus equal one hmm remember augmented operators and this was th this one is actually much more cleaner i'm just going to copy the other i'm just going to comment the other one and leave this one okay good now let's run it there you go so i'm starting from zero and i'm ending at 10. maybe we don't need zero we can start from one let's see and we can run we can get it to the 10. now i can do some of each of these numbers easily so some will be equal to the plus equal so, uh sorry not some i okay so this is exactly the same as sum equal sum plus i. Okay, now this will run until the condition is true. And let's print the sum here. And I will explain what's happening here. Here it is, 55. Now, as you can see, while the condition is tested before it gets here right before it start executing this code the condition is tested so while it will start from one well one is smaller and equal than 10 which is true then it will print one then it will create the sum 
and it will in increment the counter. This is called increment or increase the value by one. So now i is two. Two is smaller than equal than 10 and then it's gonna print i which is two and then we're gonna do the add it to the sum, okay? Then i becomes three, goes here, here again. So three is smaller than 10, print three, right? Then do the sum, then increase it to four, goes here. Four is smaller than 10, yeah, and goes on until 10 is equal to 10, right? Now, when it goes to the 11, it will be i become 11, and 11 is not smaller or equal to 10, and then is when the it breaks out of this part, goes here, look, indentation is so imp much important. This is without indentation, so the interpreter will say, okay, yeah, this is outside the while loop, so I can print the sound. And there you go. Now you know how the uh, uh, while loop is working. Perfect. Now, sometimes we can um, break the loop, we can force this one to break before the condition is false. How we can do this? Well, imagine that if the i is seven, right? If the i is seven, I want to stop everything and then the sum should be what it is until that number, okay? So how I can do this? So I can create a one if statement here and I can say if i, let's do it with brackets. We have never used the brackets. If i is equal to seven, right? Then colon here, break. Nice. This is a break statement that will terminate or that will force the loop to terminate and stop execution. So it will not go and check the, the condition again. So it will break out of this loop and it will go straight here. Now, let's have a look. It, we should not have eight, nine, and 10, and we should not have this result, right? We should have a little bit different result. Here it is, 28. And if you calculate all of this, it will be 28. Perfect. Now you know how we can break from the loop before the while condition is evaluated, right? One more thing that we can do is we can write while else. So I'm just gonna copy this one, break from the loop, and I'm gonna paste it here, but I'm gonna remove this part, right? So you have the first version, while loop, Okay, so you remember what it is. Now we have a break from the loop, and now we can have while else. Hmm, what's this? Okay, I'm gonna copy it again. I'm gonna put it here. I'm not gonna use the break now, right? I'm not gonna use the break, but what I'm going to do, I'm gonna say here at the end, else print this is printed when the condition becomes false, okay? And let's run. We'll have multiple outputs there. And let's do here print, oops, while else, so you know what's happening, right? And here we can do while break the loop. And here it's gonna be while. Good, let's save it, run it. There you go. Now, this is printed when the condition becomes false. Good, so after this condition, when it's I11, it will say, okay, this condition is false. It will go to the else and it will print this one, right? So sometimes we need, after the condition, to be, when, it's, when the condition becomes false, sometimes we need to use this else to trigger something, okay? So that's why it's super important. And that's pretty much it about while loop. So while loop, this is the syntax. We need to have a counter and inside the counter, Inside the loop, we need to increase the counter because we need this condition to work. Otherwise, it will be infinitive loop. 
Mm -hmm. We can start a counter from zero or from one. In our case, the sum doesn't, we can ha we can start from one. We, did, we don't need to start from zero, right? Because it's not gonna affect this part here. We can break the loop like this. We don't need it. And it will go great straight there. And we can use while else. So the else part, will be executed once the condition is turned to false. That's pretty much it. And this is the end of part four. I hope you like it. I think we learned a lot. We learned about loops. We learn, yeah, about the operators. So we learn a lot in this part. And in the next part will be even more interesting. So if you like it, please subscribe, share, whatever you do. I will be grateful because it, you don't know how my you don't know how how my family is reacting to this because yeah they don't believe that I can do it I don't believe myself but I'm here doing it and uh, you should do that as well because when you start programming language you always sometimes you doubt yourself you don't believe it but at the end you end up doing it and you're better than you expected so I hope I'm creating a good course for you and that's why. You should see the next section, which will be part five. So take care.